folks, and welcome to their Sunday morning Simo Flange. I'm Matt, and with me today is Jeremy again. Hello. Hi, man. Hey, how you been? It's good. Good to see you. Good to ha- good to have you back on the show. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been. It's been two weeks. Definitely. Are you ready to do this though? Uh, no, but we're gonna go with it anyway. It's funny because we didn't talk about this on the last podcast after the last podcast, and then today we almost talked about it. But I will tell you this: 2020 doesn't look that good. No. Um, <laughs> can I just describe it as a, a pile of anal waste? You know what? <laughs> that's how you describe your co-hosts on the Legends podcast. I mean, they're it? they're very comparable. <laughs> Uh, I forgot. Please go ahead and uh, plug your channel and your podcast real quick because we didn't do that last time and I regret that. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy. I have a YouTube channel called Stupid Chainsaw Productions where we talk about all sorts of nerdy things. I now make short films and I have two podcasts. One is called Star Wars Legends with my co-host Dylan and my other podcast is called The Backpedalers Podcast with my co-host Dylan. Different Dylan. Different Dylan, though. Yeah, different Dylan. currently it's Michael, because Dylan works weird hours. Oh, gosh, you. Um, Yeah, the the Legends podcast is fun to listen to, especially when they spend an entire show going over things that aren't involving Legends. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) It is fun. It is fun to listen to. Um, only because, and I've, I've said this on, uh, I think a nightcap, uh, show with Dylan on there, but I, the conversation that you, Dylan and I had about the stars expanded universe, the 13 and a half hour from Indianapolis, Indiana, all the way down to where I live, what we taught star Wars EU, the entire Time. I mean, when we broke for lunch, we were we turned over for gas. We were still talking to you, when because I had the door open. We're still talking to you. When we go into the fast food restaurant to get food to eat, sit down and eat, we're still talking to you. That conversation was one long, continuous, non repetitive, amazing conversation. Do you remember this? Yes, it was one it of was the best a- conversations we've ever. It really had. was, and someone someone says, "Dude, you should have recorded it." I had no idea it was going to go on for that long no. or that we can talk about it for that long. And to be honest, folks, I don't remember what we talked about. I just remember when we finally got into the city limits, I was like, guys, do you realize we've been talking about the expanded universe since we pulled out of the hotel this morning? And we kind of laughed. And I was like, yeah, it's been great. I said, this has been the best. It was the best road trip I'd ever had. Yeah, it same. seriously was. Same. I, and I I remember I tried to talk you two out of not doing this because I thought <laughs> there's no way you guys want to be in a car with me for 13 and a half hours. I thought y'all are going to hate me after this and because I probably wouldn't want to do it. But I was so happy that y'all did because I would have been bored out of my skull mm-hmm. and would never have had as much fun. And that that still today, it was just it was one of the best road trips I'd ever had. It, it is, was just so good. It is the best. Ooh, it is the best driving experience I've had with people in the car with me because I am not pleasant to travel with. Um, my family can attest to this, that I'm pretty unbearable when traveling with other people. In fact, um, uh, I prefer to drive alone. I've driven from California to Montana by myself, and I can do that in one sitting. Uh, like, I have no problem like traveling alone, but traveling with Matt and Dylan was just simply incredible. And I, we all learned so much from one another just talking Star Wars. And, you know, it is one of the best EU conversations I've ever had with any two people ever. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I may, I may want to do a top five, uh, top five uh, road trips now that I'm thinking about it because I'm trying to write these down. I'm thinking about that EU talk may have been one of my favorite ones. I don't know, but <laughs> it's, 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 it's in my top five for sure. Um, and here, I, you know, I'm done talking good about Dylan, so let's move on. Yeah. Um, so I've broken up this list into two categories because there is not a lot I want to see this year. I'm sorry to disappoint you all. I know we hyped up that hopefully 2020 is going to be a better year, but um, 
I'm sure we will find some indie films, or at least I will find some indie films that will not be on this list that will just wow me, and I'll be like, okay, there's still a chance for, for Hollywood, you know. <laughs> um, but basically, out of these, well, the first of all, my number one I found out came out on Christmas of 2019, so I had to just quickly remove it from the list as we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, again, 2020 seems like such a lame year. Um, I, three out of my five should be honorable mentions. Well, the thing with mine is uh, the majority of them, I'm just, I have this like fascination with how bad can it be? But I will say this we're going to have three crossover. I'm going to be bold. You know what? I say one. Oh. Because I'm lowballing some of these, and I don't think you'll stoop to this level. Okay, well, let's get at it. I'll go with number five. I'll start this time. Yes, go for it. Uh, no, uh, number five is one that everyone is looking forward to, and I am I would be looking forward to it too, but I want to know more about it, and that's Ghostbusters Afterlife. That's also my number five. Wow. Amazing. Uh, but for different reasons. Okay. Well, for me, I, all we've seen at this point is the teaser. Yes. Which doesn't show much. It doesn't need to. It's a teaser. I want to see more. I know Ghostbusters fans are really happy that 2016 is being ignored. You should be, Ghostbusters fans. Yeah. But, yeah, but I want to see more. I'm excited. I want you know, I want the Ghostbusters to come back, and I like this, but let me see a little bit more. So that's why it's a, it should be an honorable mention, but it's number five. For me, I didn't like the trailer. I thought it was too much like the Force Awakens trailer. I'm waiting for, like, as Red Letter Media said... We should be calling they, this a teaser, right? Yes. Is that technically a trailer? No, you know, you would know better than me. I'm asking. I've always considered their trailers. Some are called okay, teasers, go ahead. and that's fine. Go ahead. Some are theatrical trailers. I mean, it depends on like a theatrical trailer typically typically is longer than a teaser. Um, and then unless it's uh made by Disney, it actually shows some of the plot, so you know what you're getting into. If it's made by Disney, you don't you don't understand anything that's going on. It's just a bunch of pretty pictures. <laughs> but um, yeah. With Ghostbusters Afterlife, it was... I'm waiting for the second trailer when Bill Murray says, Chewie, we're home, to Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> That's the Red Letter Meteor response. That is, and I, I thought it was brilliant, and I had to throw it. Well, they they brilliantly chopped up that movie. I mean, what, what, what everyone was thinking about when they saw that trailer. Yeah, um... It was weird to have a teaser trailer to a comedy movie, like they said, without any jokes in it. Um, I, True. I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm very sick of the whole, ooh, it's a nostalgia movie sort of thing. Like, that's that's just lazy. Right. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Number four, Matt. Okay, so number four. We can both hit our number fives at the same time. Number four is a movie that I'm not much for remakes. In fact, I hate remakes. And you didn't even know it was coming out until you looked on this list. But The Grudge. It should be out, I think, about now. So this is not only a remake. It's a remake of a remake of, because we had, um, to have um, a, we had to have a dumbed down version of Juon. Back correct. In the day. You're correct. Ugh, I fundamentally it, hate this. <clears throat> now, here's the thing. I love the Grudge movies. I, I mean, did you hear me? Movies. I liked one, two, and yes, the direct to video sequel three. I didn't know I there just, was a three. I just thought those movies are done so well. I own them all. I need to watch them again, but I'm scared. Grudge is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. Um, and, and that's why I'm going to maybe watch the remake. As you know, I'm not, I said, maybe I'm not, I'm not going to rush out there. This may be coming to Netflix or I mean, Redbox before I watch it. Mm -hmm. And it should be listed as an honorable mention, but because 2020 is so weak, it is so weak right now. 
um, and movies coming out. That's why uh, it's number four. Um, for, have you seen Juwan? I did. I didn't like it. Really? I thought Juwan yeah. was very fresh. Well, a lot of people loved it. Yeah. Like the same with Ringu when that came out because they they remade uh, The Ring right. and The Grudge came out within a year or two of each they other. They did. Yeah. Um, gr- Lots of I will scary s- little girls. I will say this. The Grudge American version is better than The Ring. Oh, yes, definitely. Very yes. Much, It's better. It's not great, yeah, in my opinion, that. but, like, that's also not really much that my kind of horror so much. But, yeah, I digress. Um, my number four is, <clears throat> once again, this is also a remake. Um, oh. The Invisible Man. Okay. So I'm a big universal horror fan of their 30s and 40s stuff. I've loved it since right. I was a little kid. Um, and I was also a big fan of Hollow Man, which is pretty much a remake of The Invisible Man. If you remember Hollow Man back in... Ooh, was no, it? I remember that. The Kevin Bacon, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is how, in my opinion, how you do a remake of something. This isn't the Tom Cruise mummy. This is Universal <laughs> attempting to reboot their their Universal monster universe again. Let me tell you something. I'm a huge Tom Cruise fan. Me too. And that is one of his worst movies ever. That movie is horrible. Yeah, me too. How d- I'm so sad that he made a bad movie. Me too. It's just... Uh, it's worse than the man, Top Gun. The man broke his streak. Mm-hmm. How dare you, sir? Yeah. You will not see Top Gun Maverick on my list. Oh. Okay, you ready for my number three? Yeah. Yes. Top Gun Maverick. I knew it. I freaking <laughs> knew it. Um, I, it uh, here's the thing. It. I even said it was going to be an honorable mention. It, it is. The only reason it's on my list is because it's a Tom Cruise movie. I did enjoy Top Gun. I do not think it needs a sequel. I don't think it needs a sequel, especially this late. I think they've missed the boat on that. I'm not super excited that Top Gun's getting a sequel. I'm just happy to see Tom Cruise again. That's really why I'm going. I hope it doesn't suck. That's that's where I'm at right Because I do enjoy Top Gun, um, but I don't think it needed a sequel. Again, I don't know if I'll be watching this in theaters either. I may, I may wait till Redbox 2 on this because I love Tom Cruise, though I have to see it. Tom Cruise movie is always going to make my top five, regardless. So I'm done talking about it, though. You don't want to talk about it, so let's no, move I'm on. What's your number three? Godzilla <laughs> versus Kong. I've been kind of... Godzilla King of the Monsters did not make my list. It was, But it was an enjoyable film. That I saw, I wouldn't have even put it in my honorable mentions, but it was just like because Americans just don't know how to make giant monster movies. No, they don't. Godzilla King of Monsters sucked. Yeah, it it had its moments, but yeah, it, 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 it overall it, was. Kind whoa, whoa, whoa. Of, take out the monster battle. You don't care a cent about any of the human characters. Exactly. Um, but Kong Skull Island, I really enjoyed. Kong Skull Island was great. So I'm curious to see if Godzilla vs. Kong will be really enjoyable or it will have enjoyable moments that we'll just watch on YouTube in like a little montage because someone will put it out there. I'll find out when it comes to Redbox because I am not going to go see that movie. Godzilla was horrible. The first movie and the second movie was not good either. Um, And I'm a big Godzilla movie. In fact, the best Godzilla movie they ever made was the one from 1999, Matthew Broderick. Take the, I mean, it's not a terrible Roland Emmerich movie. He's made worse it's fan, films. It's fantastic. It's fanta- Even today, it's fantastic, because it's not 90s, so they say things that you can't say now in movies. It's great. I mean, it's a movie where someone decided while writing it that every character should be comic relief. That is baffling in and of itself. It's great. Great movie, great soundtrack, great build up, great toy, great, great marketing. 
They didn't uh-huh. reveal Godzilla till the day of the film. Bravo on them for keeping that under wraps. That will never happen ever again. I mean, you can never keep something secret I mean, like that. Great song, uh, Puff Daddy and Jimmy yeah. Page. Come with me. Come with me. And great that's song. not even me being facetious. That movie, that that song for that movie slaps. That music video is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, we got Puff Daddy flying around with doves. <laughs> Like, rapping at Godzilla. It's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> anyway, so, there you go. Are, are, is it up for me now? Yeah. Okay, because now we can talk about movies I really care about. Um, this movie is a sequel. Okay. Uh, this is a sequel that I actually care about, because I thought the first one was amazing. And I, I'm, I'm ready to see more A Quiet Place 2. I never saw the first A Quiet Place. Oh, okay. Well, you won because there's only one crossover now, I know for sure, because no one has my number one. But anyway, um, A Quiet Place is a brilliant film. You need to watch it. It's really good. Have you seen The Birdhouse? Is is that what it's called? Oh, yeah. No. Uh, With uh, Sandra uh, Bullock. Bullock? Oh, yeah. Uh, The Bird bird Box or whatever. Bird Box or something. Okay. Uh, You've seen that? I hated that. Okay, that's okay, because uh, that's the poor man's quiet box. Okay, okay, cool. I, I've always cool. said, I didn't mind the bird box. I thought it was interesting. It's fun. It's flawed in a little ways. We can talk about that on another podcast. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. I have to. I give things a pass when they're Netflix films. I shouldn't. I should hold those to the cinematic standard of other films. But I enjoyed it. I actually watched it twice. Because my nephews wanted to watch, I was like, you know what? I'm not against watching it a second time, and I sat through it a second time without being bored. So it's probably a better film than even I'm saying for me. But I felt I felt it was the poor man's Quiet Place. I think Quiet Place is solid. Um, if you don't know, the guy who started it also wrote it, and his wife loved it so much that's why she got into it too. Okay, I was like, I want to be in this because it's it's a really good. I found it to be a very good, interesting film. Okay. Um, and so they're making a sequel. I want to see more about the world. Um, so that's why I went to my number two. Okay. All right, so what's your number two? So my number two is also a sequel, but I'm going to have to talk about two sequels and why one of them will never be on my list and this one is. Oh, go ahead. So the one that's on my list is Bill and Ted Face the Music. Shut up. That's an honorable mention for me. Okay. The one that's not on here is the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. I thought that came out in 2019. Did it? Mm-hmm. No one saw it I, because no one likes Kevin Smith movies I anymore. Seen, I haven't seen it, but I, 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 I will watch it when I get a chance to. I don't know where that movie is, but I think it came out last year. I'm looking it up right now. Sure, I think it came out last year, but I would like to see Jay and Silent Bob reboot, too. I genuinely hated Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah, it did come out in 2019, and it got mm-hmm. a Rotten Tomatoes score of 65%. Okay, you have some editing to do, so I don't fully embarrass myself here. But no, uh, Bill, no, don't don't worry about it. So That's fine. Bill and Ted Face the Music is how you do a comedy sequel this far removed from now, its predecessor. This is why this shocks me because you don't like comedies. I don't. Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is very nostalgic to me because it's when I saw it, I said. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, but I still love it. And I, then I saw Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and I said, I love this too. I love Bogus Journey better. I don't love Bogus Journey better. Oh, I have a hard time remembering Bogus Journey, whereas Excellent Adventure, I remember pretty clearly. Because you saw it so much. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. But face the music, I, I just I was like, what on earth would cause them to make a third one? Do you know the story behind this? No, I don't. Keanu Reeves has been begging for it for years. Oh, okay. And they're finally giving him what he wants. I'm sure he did a contract with whoever's bringing it out. I'm sure he get he took a pay cut for John Wick or something mm-hmm. so that they would do. But he's been trying to negotiate a deal to get Bill and Ted face the music. Because he wants to do it. He wants to return. You know, he didn't want to return back to that character. In fact, he hated being associated with that character for years later. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't want surprising. to talk about those movies because that's not what he, how he wanted to define his career. But now he's thinking, you know what? Yeah, it's time for another one. 
And I like Keanu Reeves as an actor, so I will watch Bill and Ted's Face the Music, but probably again not in theaters because I wasn't. I don't have that nostalgia that you do. I well, watched I mean, these movies I just a few years ago for the first time ever. Oh, I think two really? years ago was the first okay. time I ever watched them. Yeah, no, I, I will. I'll wait to rent it. I really don't like going to the movie theater in general. So, like, do, do you know? Oddly enough, my number one memory with Bill and Ted is their cereal. My mom would buy their cereal, even though we never. She didn't know it was a cart. It, you know that it was a cartoon, and all she, she didn't know it was a cartoon. She just thought the cereal would look fun, and so she got us Bill and Ted's awesome cereal, whatever it was called. What did it taste Excellent like? Cereal. And it tasted fine, but mom always bought it for us. The weirdest thing. <laughs> and so I have memories of that cereal, and I never, we'd never seen the movie, and I was like, oh, I need to watch the movie sometime, because we didn't get to why they were in a telephone booth. <laughs> so, but we just ate the cereal. So that's the weirdest thing that we ate the cereal without even knowing the movie. But I did watch the movie two years ago with my brother. I said, do you want to watch these movies? I said, sure. So we both watched them one and two back to back. And I was like, that was all right. Yeah. You know, cause I like Keanu Reeves and that's young Keanu Reeves, but still I get, and if you're a kid watching these, yes, I can see where the love comes from. Oh, I was, I was like a lines. teenager specifically. And I think that was like the. It has an even though these these were early nineties, is that correct? These were late eighties. Oh, they late okay because it feels eighties. They feel eighties, yeah. but they feel that classic cinema eighties. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's enjoyable. They're enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, and Bill and Ted face the music. Go for it because I want to see Keanu Reeves, the baddest man in Hollywood, the most dangerous man. Yeah. All right. Used to be Chuck Norris, but he's retired now. Until uh, Stallone. Pulls them for Expendables 4. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. My <laughs> wife is going to be there. My wife is going to be there. She loves Expendables. By the way, my wife's number one is Legally Blonde 3 because she w- it's her, her favorite person in the world is um, – what's, what's the actress's name? Oh, gosh. I'm going blank. I'm going blank, too. Okay, but she loves that girl. So there, are Blonde. they ignoring Legally Blonde's? <laughs> my wife has that one she bought that it's a terrible movie it's unbearable she it's unwatchable yeah. she bought it she said will you watch this with me I said not really but she made me watch the first two so I watched the third one even she admitted that it was it was junk Legally um, Blonde 2 is bad she likes Legally Blonde 2 in fact we may have to watch those again it's gonna be sad but and she convinced me to bring Legally Blonde up on the stage here in the local theater alright so so she's a big, which I'll be honest, with, the the theatric production, the play, is actually pretty good. Yeah, I I've seen that it. more than the movies. I've enjoyed that more than the movies. Well, yeah, the songs are pretty hilarious, and I don't even like they musicals, are. but it's very enjoyable. They are, um, but anyway, so Legally Blind three, my wife is super excited about it, and um, that would be her number one pick, but not mine. What? But before we get into number one picks, what's your number two? Uh, I think Bill and Ted was my number two, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I was your number two. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, no, I know the question I wanted to ask you before I get to my number one. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot. You hated Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. I agree. I have hated every Kevin Smith movie post-Chasing Amy. With the exception of Dogma was somewhat watchable. Um, It was a lot of not funny I agree with that. Disappointing. I agree with some that. Some things had potential, some things didn't. Um, unnecessary, like Clerks 2 was unnecessary garbage sequel to a near-perfect mo- representation of the 90s. Well, we've talked, I think you and I, I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast before, but we've talked about how Chasing Amy, I think, is his best film. I, I would not agree with that, but it's it's better than the previous, the, the post films that have come out. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I'm a huge Mallrats fan. I don't know. I don't get the hate for that movie. I I don't. I enjoy Mallrats. It's not my favorite, but I think it's a solid <laughs> film. It was my first one I saw of his. Clerks is the best. Yeah, Clerks is. Um, Clerks is the most is relatable. Two. And Chasing Amy's number three. That's kind of weird. You're right about this because everything after that just kind of goes into the junk folder. Yeah, Dogma's I mean, like, nonsense. Like there's, there's good. Dogma was a mi- uh, a miss, a total miss. For me, I was like, oh, there were some funny moments in there. It's like if you could pull some moments out of that, pull some moments out of Jay and Bob Strike Back, 
you know, is you could cobble together a decent film. Yeah, but he but just and then Clerks Two just Clerks oh, Two. That's right. that's when the nail in the coffin happened because that's when we get things like um, Cop Out, Tusk, Yoga Hosers. I never watch those. Don't. Yeah. Um, it's garbage. He's an overrated director. The, all he does is cry about how he like wrote Batman and was terrible at it, and how he wrote the worst Daredevil story ever. Yeah. Um, the boo hoo! You get to write for the two two great comic book characters, and he made that terrible show Comic Book Men on AMC. I thought it was okay, but it's very scripted. You could tell. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah. Slight. All right, so let me get to my number one. Uh, do we want to do honorable mentions first? Go ahead. I don't have any. <laughs> I have one, and it's one of those things where I'm fascinated by how bad it's going to be. And this Black is Widow. <laughs> Wonder Woman 1984 with the um, New Order uh, epic remix in the trailer. New tra- Mutants. I didn't realize that was a film until we looked at the list before this. I, I was baffled. It sucks so bad. But Go it ahead. is James Bond, twenty five, no time to die. I don't know how they convinced Daniel Craig to do another one of these films. It doesn't look like a James Bond movie. It's supposed to be woke, and we're supposed to have a female James Bond possibly at the end of this. And I just uh, don't like any of that. As I understand it, and I could be way wrong, because I, I, I do not keep up with James Bond. Didn't he have one more movie in his contract, and that's what they pressed him on, and he bellyached and did it? I don't know. I thought Spectre was Or did they just back up to... that money truck? I think they backed up the money truck, honestly. Because okay. Spectre, he was done. He Because Daniel Craig gotcha. is horribly injured in every single one of these James Bond movies, because they just beat the, the crap out of him. There's... Yeah, he's... He's given zero effort for this next movie. Yeah, and it's just like, if they didn't, if Spectre, well, the thing is, Skyfall was the perfect end to a James Bond movie. Then they made Spectre, and then that was the even more perfect end to never make another James Bond movie, ever. Everything's tied up, everything is done. And then they do this, and it's like, ugh, I probably will end up seeing it, out of curiosity as a hardcore James Bond fan because I'm finally getting used to series I absolutely love get destroyed in this um, this era of filmmaking what's his what's his number again 007 yeah what's the first number in that number zero that's how many James Bond films I've seen I know we've talked about this you're a Mission Impossible guy and I've only seen the first two of those that's right. Just letting everyone reminding everyone, I've never seen a 007, so I won't either. Mm-hmm. I just, I just don't have any interest in the super spy. Even though everyone I've talked to, Jeremy agrees with you. Mm-hmm. They love Skyfall and they love Spectre. Um, they may love Skyfall a little bit better though. Yeah, Sky. Well, Skyfall was the one that got nominated for Oscars and actually won some Oscars. Yeah. All right. Any other honorable mentions? No, because I had to bump Ghostbusters to five. There you go. My number one is a movie that's not coming out in theaters. It's going to come out straight to DVD, and when it does, I will buy it. The I'll probably pre-order if I can. I think I know what this is, though. So. Would you like to guess? Did they make a Tremor 7? They will be, yes. They are making it right now, <laughs> and it will be out later on this year. <laughs> and I cannot wait. I am a huge Tremors fan. You know, if I had known that, I would have put that as an honorable mention. Tremors 2 is the best Tremors movie they ever made. Better than the first one. Yes. Tremors 1 is second. Tremors 3 is third. Tremors 4 did never existed for me. It's a horrible movie. Tremors 5 is great. Not as good as 3. I disagree with that, but we, we've talked about that before. Okay, and Tr- Tremor 6 is a very big disappointment. Not as bad as 4, but a definite, a big step down because they did the whole... And they really went cheap, and you could tell. And usually they, they do well on a low budget, but that, for 6, they did terrible. 6 looks like a sci-fi channel original movie at times. 
it looked beyond bad. A, a sci -fi, a, a, an original sci-fi movie on the Sci-Fi Channel. Yes. That's one yeah. of the uh, first sci-fi movies. Yeah, That's like, how bad it was. Like a Transmorphers. When, when, you, when you film in a blue lens to make <laughs> sand, that is obvious sand, look like snow, but it's obviously sand, and we all know it. Yep. You just put a different blue lens on the camera. Because it, that's, that's high school, man. I don't do that. That's high school effects. I know. It's just terrible. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I was embarrassed because Bruce and I were so excited for Tremor 6 when it came out. We watched it the day it came out, and I was thinking, oh, don't do this. Don't. Because I know you don't have money, but come on. Now, Jamie Kennedy is not in this one. Good. So if you, if you hate Jamie Kennedy, but I think – now, he said, you know, no hard feelings. He's just not in this one. Helps to come back later. The thing is, I think they just cut him out because they need the money. <laughs> Uh, to put into because they realize that hey fans because they do listen to fans mm -hmm. and I think they found out that oh yeah we do look cheap there so maybe we need to cut our costs where we can and that's cutting the actors mm -hmm. and they don't get good at they keep, keep Michael Gross because they know that's the only thing that's making us buy the ticket that's buying the DVD and I'm just I just want them to do better it's like I I hated Die Hard Five. I hope Me they too. do a Die Hard 6 so it doesn't end on Die Hard 5. But I'm afraid if they do a Die Hard 6, it'll suck more. It's almost what I feel like for Tremor 7. I want them to do a Tremor 7. Please don't end it on 6, but please don't make it crappy. Well, uh, Make it at least the volume of 5. Michael Gross will actually try, which is whereas Bruce Willis... Oh, he always Willis, tries. He's an A-plus actor. Bruce Willis, if he did a Die Hard 6, he'd have to sit for most of it because he'd probably refuse to even stand up. Well, remember they are talking about that prequel sequel. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. I'm fine with as long as he gets back with Holly in the future. If they do a prequel sequel, I'm okay with that. I think that'd be a great ending. As long as you and we need Al back too. Yeah. Well, they would have to do that because it's all about nostalgia now. Y yes. And I and I I will gobble it up for Trevor Seven. What I'd like. Well, I won't see a Tremors seven, so let me just skip to Tremors eight. Yes, I hope they make an eight. I hope they. I hope they beat out Fast and Furious. They need to catch up with Fast and Furious, okay? But Tremors eight needs to be this. They need to get some more money and get Reba McIntyre to come back and reprise her role to get back <laughs> with Michael Gross, and that's how the movie. Well, Heather was her name. Mm -hmm. He he needs to get back. Gebert needs to get back with Heather, and that's how they should end it. A Reba McIntyre, Michael Gross, buddy film on Tremors 8, and they can end it if they want to. If they want to do a 9, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I mean, but don't, don't let bad movies stop you. I mean, look at Disney. They just plugged away after 7, episode 7. Yep, that they did. <laughs> Uh, that, but that yeah, Tremor did. Seven. It's, it's a no-brainer. I'm gonna see it. Is it gonna be the best film of the year? No, probably not. But I really hope it gets in my top five, because I just love the Tremors franchise. Such an underrated franchise, and though and that they're doing, they keep doing movie sequels should tell you something about these diehard fans. Well, that they listen to their fans is the key. They do. There. They do. and I should be thankful that they're even making movies. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because they don't have to. They can. Buy, they, this is all done for the love of the of the of the genre. But anyway, all right, so that's my number one. Week number one. But that's why I went first. So what's your number one? Halloween Kills. Boo. I agree, but Halloween as a series is one of the most baffling things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the half of them are comedies unintentionally. Right. I mean, this is the series where we have, where there was a film where Busta Rhymes did Kung Fu against Michael Myers. God, that was embarrassing. Yeah, and we also had... Out of the original story run, the one through eight, that was the worst. Yeah. It, it, it's the absolute worst. Then, In fact, if you want to watch, what was it called? It wasn't called Halloween 8, it was called Halloween... Resurrection. Resurrection. Watch the first ten minutes and then turn it off. Don't even watch. Don't bother to even watch the first ten minutes because it ruins the acceptable ending of H two O. But I'll will give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, H, it probably should have ended with H two. Well, it definitely should have ended with H two O. It should have ended end? with two. Yeah. Then <laughs> technically, 
Come well, on. Now. So so how I got to before I get into why kills gets the number 1, we got to go Halloween is a slasher masterpiece that is a staple of the genre. Halloween 2 is a rip off of Friday the 13th that it was a rip off of Halloween, which is bizarre. Yeah. Halloween Halloween 3 was attempting to make an anthology series which if they had kept it up I think would have been incredible, but no one liked that. So we got Halloween 4, which is a retread of Halloween, but not clever. Stop, stop. stop. And on Halloween 3, I, I, I agree with that. I understand why fans didn't like it, mm-hmm. but I applauded them for trying something different. My wife makes me skip. When we watch all the Halloween, she makes me skip 3. And I'm like, no, we're going to watch 3. But she didn't like it because it's not Michael Myers. It's like, yeah, but they tried something different. I think we should appreciate that film. I mean, technically he's in there. It's a trailer well, for the original film that they just threw yeah, in as a but, cameo. But the thing is, though, I I did wish that that would have worked and they could have done different movies because I, I do agree. I think they would have struck gold again. I think they would have found another villain to do back-to-back movies on. But anyway, okay, so four. Four is a retread of one without any of the subtleties of it. Five is uh, we can't do what we established in four because we are, we're too uh, – we can't gamble on that. And so it's just... I do like four and five, though. Five is just four, but dumber, if that's possible. Six is, has two cuts that are both baffling, but the only reason to watch it is if you're a Paul Rudd fan, it's his first film. Yep, yep. that's why I love it. And it makes me howl with laughter that they put in loving memory of Donald Pleasance at the end. Because he died because during that, filming. That is... The gr- a great way to send off to a fantastic actor is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. And to be honest, that's why you should watch it, because Paul Rudd, first movie, and Donald Glover's last movie. Yeah. It's it's great. It's great. But um, And they try to dig into the mythology, which they really shouldn't have, but they... But again, kudos for doing it. Yeah. Um, they, just, they just really screwed it up. But they, they were trying to show that they had this plan, and they did for 4, 5, and 6. Mm-hmm. And 6 was going to be the accumulation, uh, you know, accumulation of all the 4, 5, and 6. But they it, it just dead on delivery because they couldn't get the actress to come back because she found out that she was going to die at the beginning. She's like, yeah. well, I'm not coming back just to die. Um, so it kind of was messed up from the beginning because you didn't know who that girl was at first. Yeah. Um, also, it was just so many years after five. Yeah. Um, and, and in a time when slasher movies were dead, this is pre-Scream. Well, that's the thing. It was the it was the owner of the rights who wanted to push it, and they said, no, slasher movies are dead. He went, no, but we need to do this. Mm-hmm. I want to continue because he had a good story, but you're right. The box office fell flat on slasher movies. They were done now. Mm-hmm. And the studio was saying, no, we shouldn't do it. But the guy who was the, in charge of the studio was like, no, I want this done. And it took a while fighting with his own studio to get it done, you know, but just wrong. And it, it, and, it and the thing is, though, it came out right before Scream, right? Yes. Which, re, re, which reignited the franchise. Because mm-hmm. we have because H2O, which is a ripoff of Scream, but also is. semi ignores everything else. But that was because apparently there was a longer cut of the film. And but they do it. Yeah, they do explain that she's been in the witness protection program, mm-hmm. that she was declared dead, thrown into witness protection. So they give you a loophole. This is back before the whole whatever we call it now, remake, jump. You know, we're going to ignore the sequels and just tie to the original. Yeah. This is back before they had anything like that. So they felt like they had to do something to tie to the other movies, but they didn't want to. Mm-hmm. So they threw that one line or explanation in there and moved on, which I was fine with. Yeah, and it's a solid film in it of its own, in its it own right. Then they said, "Well, that made money. Let's let's make another one with, but we can't get LL Cool J in there. But we need a rapper. How about Buster uh-huh. Rhymes? I'm shocked they didn't get Ice Cube. Horrible, horrible. But uh, it, it's really bad. And then ten what was it? Was it, I think it was eight years later we got Rob Zombie decided that he had to remake." <laughs> Oh, Halloween, God. and it is one of the most baffling movies because it's three films. It's a really everyone's a, a awful human being in those movies. You don't care about anyone. It tries to do this whole Michael Myers was an abused child thing, but doesn't do it well because he's he's awful and everyone else is awful. 
Then it tries to do a psychological thing with him in the asylum. And then they were like, well, this isn't working either. Oh, uh, let's just remake the original completely with more gore and uh, more TNA and make it an hour long. Yep. And then yep. Halloween 2, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, I should say, is uh, just, what if we made a psychological horror movie, but we're stupid and don't know actually how to make that? And so they made garbage. Horrible. And then cut to 2018, we remake Halloween 2. And I thought it was super solid. Matt's giving me the thumbs down, but I thought it was like, I'm like, wow, it only took you uh, 10 times to actually make a really solid sequel to Halloween. Um, I enjoyed it. I found it to be like, okay, here's the progression from 1978 to 2018 in the way that you do a, a slasher movie. Um, there's there's a scene where it's like a single take of Michael Myers going house to house and just randomly choosing people to kill with a hammer. Right. And as we learned from the last podcast, I do enjoy Death by Hammer. I find it's it funny. very amusing. Yeah. Um, I stopped after Resurrection. I haven't seen a Halloween movie since. Don't see the Rob Zombie movies, but I do recommend Halloween 2018. It's very fascinating. So Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends are the sequels that are happening to 2018's Halloween. Yeah. Um, and I'm very curious to see what direction this filmmaker goes with, because Halloween 2018 to me had a definitive end, but I guess it doesn't now. But then again, Halloween 2 had a definitive end. <laughs> well, my, my wife was disappointed. She loves Halloween. That's her favorite scary movie of all time. And she loves that whole series. And she loves H2O. H2O is on par with the first movie for her because she just thought it was just such a great movie. She was so disappointed when she went to see Halloween and saw that they skipped over everything except for the first movie. And she was so confused. And then she got mad. She went, why did they skip over H2O at least? Because that was a good movie too. And that starred Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm so confused on why they were pre pretending that movie never existed. And I was like, well, Megan, that's just what they did. But she did not like it. She did not like how they wouldn't accept the other movies. So I think the missus is out for Halloween kills. They had an explanation that I found curious uh, when someone was like, oh, I heard that someone, that Michael Myers was uh, Laurie Strode's brother. And then someone's like, dude, people just made that stuff up. That's just town myth. And it's like, okay, that's, that's how you, that's how you explain that. You just throw like a, a couple sentences together. But is that really what fans want? I don't know. I, I, I was fine with it. Um, the score is killer. If anything, Matt, you should listen to the score. John Carpenter comes back and does the score for it. Oh, I did hear that. And it is one of the best movie scores ever. I listened to the score far before I saw the film and I listen to it constantly. It is, it is one of the best scores to a horror movie ever. It's solid. If you like Synthwave, would recommend Halloween score. Okay. But yeah, well. no, it's going to be a lackluster year of um, Black Widow the movie. Wonder Woman 1984, which is not a George Orwell um, tie-in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I wish I was that witty to think about that. That's oh. funny. If it was, I would probably be more interested Dude, seeing it. it I have zero be. interest in um, Birds of Prey, because we got to have our Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad in the movie, but we can't totally have a Suicide forgot. Squad movie. Um, oh, God. What uh, what other garbage? Venom two. Nope. Um, there. Hopefully, they don't make another Star Wars movie. We don't. We don't. I need... don't think there's a single superhero movie I'm excited about next year. I, I I mean, I wasn't excited for a single one that came out this uh, in 2019, let alone 2018 or possibly 2017. Wow. Or maybe tw even 2016. I think I've been done since then. I'll be interested next year when they do Deadpool 3. I'm not interested for that because I thought Deadpool 2 was a piece of garbage. Well, Wolverine's coming back. Uh, Hugh Jackman? Yeah. It you know would be really funny is if they did a motion capture of Hugh Jackman. It's going to be, for what I understand, 
it's going to be an out of shape Logan because that's what um, that's what he wants. I mean, they ruined the X Men thing with they ruined the X Men universe with X Men Last Stand, but like. It's never fully recovered. Oh, oh no, sir. Last Stand is a masterpiece compared to what they've brought out the past few I, years. I know, I know, because the, I mean, they Please. remade Last Stand. They called it it's, Dark Phoenix, and it was. Oh no, uh, that is a horrible movie. I don't think that's a movie, Matt. I think that is in the <laughs> the category with something like Ghostbusters twenty sixteen or Jack and okay. Jill or Pixels, where it's just a bunch of lights and sounds and uh, pictures. Horrible. As uh, Dave Filoni would say, he likes the pictures, especially when they move, you know? like. Oh, man, especially when they move. I don't even know if he would like that picture <laughs> when it moves because it is terrible. It is terrible. It's ter- I, even, I never even watched the uh, Terminator Dark Fate because I already knew it was going to be garbage. I did, and I was trashed and still didn't like it. Oh, oh yeah. Um, are you excited for Fast and Furious Nine? No, but if CJ was on the podcast, that would be his number one. I'm not even joking. Oh, I bet it would be. Um, or uh, uh, how about Bad Boys for Life? We oh don't God, even number no. Bad Boys no. movies. No, um, no. Or I'll be honest. I will watch Fast and Furious Nine when it comes on Redbox because I always they're they're good popcorn films. But I never, except for Hobbs and Shaw. I thought Hobbs and Shaw was so generic. I, I have a It's watched. a generic action film. I just don't like them. They're just not on I can understand that. I mean, the I'm only. I'm not crazy about them, but they're CJ's favorite. I mean, uh, what about uh, Doolittle that's getting thrown out in January? Uh, I think rock... Red Letter Media talks about movies released in January. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, F or... U.S. January movies. Exactly. Or uh, I mean, honestly, it was so hard for me not to put Sonic the Hedgehog as number one. Because that is the most baffling thing I've ever seen in my life. They, if we we could have had like a nice parallel of um, he, the fans, li- the uh, studio listened to the fans and changed the way Sonic looked for the movie. <laughs> and Jim Carrey's acting again. I don't care. I just don't care. Yeah. That's just a yeah. So it's gonna be a dead year, folks. Yeah. Um. Hopefully some indie things come out and we can talk about them this time next year. There's always a big surprise like that. Maybe. Who knows? Because along well, in 2018, I think Baby Driver was the shocking runaway hit for me. Never saw it coming. Mm-hmm. Loved the director, but he wasn't working with Simon Pegg, so I wrote it off. And then watched it anyway. It's a brilliant film. Maybe there's something like that coming out. We will see, folks. And if so... You have to come back to the end of the year to listen to those comments. But we'll see you next time on more Saturday morning. Samuel Flan.